This is not your future talking, but today we are going to be going forward in time. Good morning, friends. Today we are going to be talking about the hour on our analog clock. And our I can statement today, I want you to repeat it, is I can use addition to find out the ending time. Give me one second. I'm gonna put it out. When we're talking about an ending time, that lets us know, or it indicates, that we should have a starting time. Today, you are gonna be provided the starting time, and using addition, you will have to find out our ending time. To start off, I'm gonna start with digital time. We're gonna move on to our analog clock once we get into our definition box, but I wanna start off with digital time to see how, what strategy can we use today to find this out. So if I was to have a start time of eight o'clock and I said that two more hours pass, what will be my end time? Well, one of the ways that I can find this out is by drawing a number line. Earlier this week, we used a number line to help us find out our time. We can use this again. Now I know that I said that I'm starting at eight o'clock. I said that two hours have passed. So what I'm gonna do is just to be safe, I'm gonna do my number line starting at one and finishing at 15. So I have, actually, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, so I'm going to use my number line. I'm gonna start at one and end at 12. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. My starting time is eight o'clock. So what I will do is circle my eight. Then it said that I moved how many hours? Yes, two more hours. So because I already have my eight started, I'm not gonna count this as one because I'm already at eight o'clock. I will move on to the next one. So I will go one, I moved one, two. How many mountains do I have? Two mountains. I moved two hours. Then I will put an X on that number. So that tells me that two hours after eight o'clock is an end time of 10 o'clock. I use my counting on strategy. Or what I also can do is add but I'm gonna show you that on our analog clock. As mentioned previously, we said that our I can statement today was I can use addition to find out the ending time. In our definition box, we have three words that we're gonna focus in on today. We have addition, start time, and end time. Now I know you guys know the formula for addition. So when I'm talking about addition, what is it that I'm doing? Something plus something equals something else. Let me hear you say it. Now whisper it. Now scream it. Yes, addition is part plus part equals whole. So what would I say my start time is? If I'm thinking about addition, would I say that my start time is my part or that my start time is my whole? Yes, my start time is part. It's one of the parts of the equation that I'm gonna do. What is my end time then? Awesome, my end time is what we will call the whole. Now we have a second part that we haven't identified. What would we call that part? Maybe the passing hours or how many hours have passed. So passing hours, we will say is our next part. Now I wanted to bring this all together today. 
we've learned first that we can use a number line to help us solve. We have part plus part equals our whole. Now, how will we do that on an analog clock? We're going to give an example. We have a start time clock and our end time clock. Today, we're using addition to try to identify our ending time. Today, we'll be focusing only on hours. We'll be focusing only on what? Yes, hours, which means that my minute hand should be moving. Oh, my hour hand should be moving. Awesome. So because we're focusing on hours, we know that our minute hand needs to be pointing at the number 12 because that indicates that we are in a brand new hour. I'm going to start off with three o'clock. So we have our start time. That's one of our parts. Our start time is three o'clock. I'm going to say that four hours have passed. So if four hours passed, how would I solve this? I know that I can use the number line, but how else can I solve this? Well, I know that I have the number three because we said that today we're using addition. I'm going to put my plus sign there, but then how would I figure out what is my second part? Well, if I look in my definition box, I see that my start time is the part. I have that, but where else do I see part? Oh, the passing hour. So that means that this number will be my second add-in. Awesome. And then that shall equal something. So three plus four, well, I can use my fingers, I can use my number lines, I can draw a picture. I'm gonna draw a picture. So I will have three counters plus four more counters should give me my answer. So let me count them. Count with me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven is my answer. But is seven a time? Seven is not a time. So how can I use addition to help me solve my analog clock? Well, I know that I'm starting at three o'clock. I know that I should move, yes, four more spaces. Because I'm adding, am I gonna go forward or am I gonna go backwards? Yes, I'm gonna go forward. So I'll start at three and I'll count four more spaces. We never count the number we start at as one. That is zero. So let's move forward. We have one, two, three, four. My ending time was at seven. So I would say that my start time is at three. If four hours have passed, now it is Yes, seven o'clock. My minute hand stays the same. And I come to my hour hand. There have been four hours. I have four mountains. One mountain, two mountain, three mountain, four mountains. I just showed that three o'clock plus four more hours equals seven o'clock. Today, when you guys are doing your individual work, you are going to identify your end time. You will be provided your start time and how many hours have passed, and then you have to identify what is the ending time. High five, you guys crushed it today.